I'm here with Kerry Elwes and the very lovely Shawnee Smith from Saw. Now, I have the honor of being able to not only host your live audio commentary tonight, but also host your Q&A on Sunday. And I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Now, Shawnee and I know each other, but, but we're, this is my first time to meet you, Kerry. But back when Saw first came out, I actually got to go to the very, very first test screening that they did, which I think was at San Diego Comic-Con. And it was like a last minute thing they put together. And I was blown away by this thing. I just, I, I was like, this is going to be the biggest thing in the world. Did you guys ever think this would turn into something that was going to be seven films and have just this huge fandom surrounding it? I don't think you could. Yeah. Who could? I mean, who could have imagined that? What's well, a pretty modest film to begin with? It was shot on a low budget. It was shot in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Or shot in LA. It was shot in LA. 17 day shoot. Right. 17 and a half, but who's counting? Um, and yeah, it was shot for less than a million dollars. And we, of course, we, no one had any idea. We, we, we just thought we were making a pretty interesting little movie. And, you know, we were, Shawnee and I and the rest of the cast were obviously very well aware of, of James Wan's talent and, and Lee Winnell as well. But we had no idea it would spawn into this huge franchise. I mean, you know. How often do you get inundated with Saw questions? I mean, like, just like people come up to you on the street, do they want to ask you all these things about the movies? Or, you know, I mean, especially before the last one came out, I'm sure people were constantly bugging you, like, were you ever going to see Dr. Gordon again? Like, how often do you get those questions? Well, I, I was very fortunate that I had, you know, Dr. Gordon build up quite a large fan base. And so I got a lot of letters and emails. And, uh, you know, the, the, I have the fans to thank, really, for bringing my character back because they campaigned heavily. They, they wrote the producers, they wrote the studio, they blogged about it, and you know, and they're really diehard fans. So I'm really here to to thank them, you know, um, because without them, I wouldn't have, you know, my character wouldn't have returned. Now this is Carrie's first convention ever. Shawnee, have you given him any warnings or tips or anything he needs to be on the lookout for? The wild, crazy fans. I think it's best to just take this kind of thing in with no uh, expectations or. Warnings. <laughs> now, are you going to give us some surprising stories in this live commentary? I want some surprising dirt on everybody in the movie. You got something for me? Uh, on the what? In the commentary tonight? Uh, am I doing a live commentary? I think you guys are listed for it. I'm pretty sure you're there. I thought Is this you all news? Oh, no, no, no. You, I'm just moderating it. Like you, you guys are supposed to actually be there for it. You mean no I have, to, I have to watch? Yeah, you have oh, to watch. God. There's so much I had no idea. I'm bringing this on you, aren't I? I'm sorry. How could I prepare Carrie? I'm not prepared myself. <laughs> but I remember when this. That's right. Still we, you still have yours, don't you? The grape soda. Bottle cap necklace. Uh, yeah. Yep. Well, we I. Gig in Plano, Texas. That's right. Yeah, it was awesome. So, so let me just ask you this, because you've both worked on such an amazing, diversified selection of films. Do you have a personal favorite? Is there something that really stands out in your mind, like, this is my favorite role of all time, or this is the role that really stands out in my mind that I, I'll always remember that moment of being able to work on that film? I mean, and I remember you from... Well, one of the standout films like that would be the one Carrie was in, <laughs> The Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Bride and Galaxy Quest. Um, you know, probably Linda on Becker. Yeah. Great. I miss her. I miss that human. That was just a great, fun, amazing. That's when my mom fell in love with you. She's 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 all with some caring. <laughs> um, well, you know, Princess Bride obviously is a very personal favorite of mine. And being a father now, I'm looking forward to showing it to my kid when she grows up a little, a little bit. Um, you know, I'm very proud of I'm very proud of Saw too. You know, I'm very proud of the fact that it still has this incredible, you know, longevity and fan base, as I mentioned before. And so, yeah, I've been very fortunate. Very fortunate. I'm glad to have you both here. I'm looking forward to everything this weekend. Thanks for coming out to Texas Friday Mirror Weekend. I'll take care. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you again. Yes. Here with Costas Mandalore from the Saw movies. Now, this is uh, this is really interesting. We were just talking with uh, Kara Curry and Shawnee here about how this was a movie franchise that I don't know if anybody really saw coming. You know, I mean, <laughs> saw coming. But but if anybody really would have guessed that it would have turned into you know the long lasting, really popular thing that it's become. Was this something that when you got involved with it, did you have any idea at that time? Well, you know, I, I, I jumped aboard on Saw 3. Right. And it was already its own massive success at that point. Yeah. So I keep telling people that my main objective was not to screw anything up. 
so maybe they wouldn't kill me straight away. <laughs> and I ended up, you know, staying around for quite a while, so I, I guess it worked out pretty good. But I knew they had something, but the, the, the tough part was, will they sustain? Yeah. And I guess they did. Yeah. And, and plus, your part ends up becoming, like, extremely important. I mean, like, I don't even know if people realized at first just how much of a central character you were going to be. Was it kind of fun being able to sort of ramp that up film after film? Yeah, well, you know, when I started in 3 and 4, I just wanted to be a surprise package. And then it's just, you know, I learned the rules from Jigsaw and whatnot and his philosophies. But in the end, it was nice to lose control and go to the, towards the madness, you know, without the rules, so to speak. So I got to practice and play around a bit. It was good. What's the most interesting fan experience you've had at one of these things? Uh, look, there are a few. The, first of all, the fans are really clever and really, really dedicated and loyal to the, the franchise, and we adore them for that. But um, I just remember seeing the, uh, pendul the pendulum scene in Saw 5, the opening scene with 2,000 people, and when it faded to black, they went insane. <laughs> and that was like uh, I threw a touchdown in the Super Bowl. You know, it just felt good. Yeah. And I'm glad the fans loved it. Yeah. It's really cool seeing you in those films. What's up next for you at this point? Um, there's a few things that I'm working on, but I've taken some time off. And, you know, the, the, the scary time for an actor is when you take time off because you think they might forget who you are. Right. So it's time to get back on the horse and ride. So I'll find out next month or so. Yeah. Very, very cool. Man, we appreciate you coming out to Texas Frightmare Weekend. I think you're going to have a blast. Yo, it's it's going to be fun. Man. Thanks, Thank man. You. Appreciate it.